dopamine, video games, scrolling, and oodles and doodles of other things. You've been led to believe that dopamine is personally responsible for the downfall of humanity. In 2020, TikTok goblins tamper with our brains, and ever since, we as a species haven't been the same. Dopamine facilitated the destruction of peak Earth. Or at least, that's what big serotonin wants you to think. But I'm here to tell you that couldn't be further from the truth. Here we go. Dopamine is not pleasure. You do something gratifying like putting your house and entire kid's college fund on black and you get that sweet, sweet hit of dopamine, right? Wrong. It's actually something that you have constantly at all times. Just like how data brokers have your data at all times. Oh, hey, would you look at that? It's Delete Me, the sponsor of this video. What is a data broker, you may ask? Data brokers are the big bad wolves of the internet that sell your personal data. Names, phone numbers, addresses, social media, all being casually sold like celery in the produce aisle. And literally anyone can buy this stuff. Stalkers, people trying to steal your identity, spam colors, the possibilities that other people can do with your information stretch as far as your imagination will take it. But fear not, Delete Me goes to these big bad data brokers and says, hey, like this guy. It checks literally hundreds of data brokers for your personal data, and if it finds any, it does its thing. I've personally used Delete Me, and I kid you not, I went from getting around four spam calls a day to maybe once a month. Turns out some data broker had my name and phone number, and they were presumably just giving it out like candy. But with Delete Me, you have the power to halt this personal data candy giving. And all you have to do is submit your info for removal. Delete Me experts find and remove your personal information. Removal process starts, and you get a detailed report. Scans and deletions continue to happen year round, too. Get 20% off delete me consumer plans when you go to join deleteme.com slash this and use promo code this at checkout that's join deleteme.com slash this code this back to dopamine so if this stuff is not a happy chemical then what is it to explain exactly what dopamine does we're gonna look at some rats two rats that are in university to be studied. The rats are separated and each have a lever they can press for a little treat. But one rat has had all of their dopamine sucked out, confiscated, poof, gone. We'll call this rat Jeffrey. You think that because Jeffrey had no dopamine, he wouldn't eat food because he won't feel pleasure of eating food. There's no sweet, sweet dopamine hit, right? Well, when the questionably sane researchers placed Jeffrey right next to the lever, he pressed it and he ate and seemed to really like eating even with the lack of dopamine. But if the questionably sane people placed Jeffrey only one single rat's length away, he did not go and get the food. The other rat, we'll call him Fitzgerald, who has dopamine, will work and do whatever it needs to do to get that food. This includes mazes, climbing, in some cases, the researchers even observed Fitzgerald's getting thrown by homeless Dave, all for a treat. The point I'm trying to make is that dopamine being a happy chemical that you shouldn't have too much of is a big fat lie. Dopamine is the chemical that drives action. Okay, take away the rats. Let's talk about human beings for a minute. Let's take some Discord mod that indulges in constant pleasure through something that requires very little action. This guy is the human form of Jeffrey. His brain has been sucked of dopamine, but why is that? In our little rat thing, the researchers physically took dopamine out of the rat's brain. So where's this guy's dopamine? It's helpful to think of dopamine as a pool. If you getting your gratification is relatively easy, say just swiping your finger, your brain says, yo gang, this is easy. Drain that pool. We don't even need that stuff. And by drain, I mean, it just starts making less, which means at any given moment, you have less dopamine at your disposal. This person is less motivated at their normal or baseline than a regular person because they have less dopamine, less Less motivation, less drive, less power, less hunger, less devour. They're essentially a starving Dwayne Johnson. But don't get me wrong, dopamine does still spike during certain moments, meaning that sometimes, for a brief second, your dopamine goes from here to here. Say you're a regular guy, normal baseline of dopamine on a diet. It's October 31st, Halloween night, and you see some kid with a peanut butter cup. You realize you could literally just go and take it if you so desired. What's he gonna do? You decide that you do so desire and that this is a good plan, so you get up to execute. The moment you get up and decide you're going through with the action is actually where dopamine spikes the most. Then it goes down a bit, and when you snatch the peanut butter cup just before you're about to eat it, you get another spike. Then while you're eating, it levels back out. But the interesting thing is that after eating the kid's peanut butter cup, you get another change in dopamine, a dip. This is what esteemed scientists and researchers call post peanut butter cup clarity. The question is, does this harm baseline dopamine? Well, not totally. But if these sort of spikes happen often, then 
Yeah, that'll mess with things. Your brain might notice how easy that was. You take peanut butter cups from more kids and your brain stops producing so much dopamine because of how easy the action is. It just doesn't need as much. But we're not done yet. Because baseline lowers, there's less dopamine to make spikes with. So even your spikes get less satisfying. And this doesn't just happen on big dramatic scales. This happens to you all the time. Probably. Say you sit down for a relaxing Instagram scroll sesh. The first, say, 10 videos are really, really enjoyable and stimulating. During this time, the spikes are high. But you might notice, after about an hour of grade A brain rot, you aren't really enjoying yourself and don't even want to keep watching. But you still do. At this point, spikes are low. But baseline is lower, so you keep watching. Social media is an entire rabbit hole of dopamine, and I'm actually working on a video for it specifically. But in the meantime, it's very important that you know one thing. These spikes and dips don't just happen with negative things like social media, gambling, and taking things from small children. They happen literally anytime you get a peak in dopamine, even if it's for a positive reason. Say you're professional strong dude, Eddie Hall, and you've been preparing to lift a gazillion pounds for like your whole life. When you get up to lift the weight, your dopamine is going to be through the roof. You want to get this weight up more than you've ever wanted anything. The crowd's cheering, you start the lift, you get it up, pure bliss. Well, the next day, you'll almost certainly feel a complete lack of motivation and depression like none other. No matter the cause of the peak, it always falls just as hard as it rose. Sometimes people will try and tell you you can manipulate when these spikes happen with videos like how to trick your brain into releasing dopamine while studying, which is just weird. If you study and you learn a new thing or have an aha moment, you're probably going to get pleasure from that. That means your brain is going to start releasing dopamine while you study to get this pleasurable experience. You aren't tricking your brain. This is just what your brain does when it learns new things, because generally it likes doing that. Generally. Okay, quick overview. Dopamine is less about pleasure, more about motivation and drive. You always have dopamine in your system and the resting amount that you have by default is called the baseline. The higher the baseline, the more motivation you have at all times, meaning you're generally more productive and happier. The lower the baseline, the less motivated you are to do even basic tasks. Life itself is just not motivating. More dopamine, good. Less dopamine, bad. So if this is a biological process happening in your brain, is there anything you can really do to significantly raise that baseline long term? Well, some people say there are special foods you can eat. And I mean, there certainly are special foods that will spike dopamine like crazy. But in terms of raising baseline long term, just drinking green tea won't do anything noticeable. But there are some things you can do. Step one, the basics. If you don't do these things almost every day, your baseline of dopamine will be unavoidably garbage. First, sleep good. During sleep, your brain refills its pool of dopamine. If you don't sleep enough or you don't sleep well, it just won't get filled all the way. That's seven to nine hours. Any less and you are actively sabotaging your dopamine. Second, nutrition. I know, I know, the thing I said about special foods. This is different though, I swear. Dopamine is made out of a nutrient called tyrosine. If you eat well, generally, you'll get this stuff. But that doesn't mean if you eat a ton of tyrosine, your brain's gonna make more dopamine, like the green tea fanatics would have you believe. It's like building a house. If you get four million bricks to build a medium-sized house, you're just going to get a medium-sized house with a lot of leftover bricks. On the flip side, if you get four bricks to build the same medium-sized house, well, let's just say the big bad wolf is eating good tonight. If you do both of these things at least somewhat well most of the time, then you're capable of having a good baseline, but it's not given. Which brings us to step two, beyond the basics. This is where things get fun, because once you understand all this, then adjusting that baseline is easy actually. Just like how engaging in easy pleasure signals to your brain that baseline dopamine should be lower, engaging in hard stuff signals that your baseline should be higher. I know this probably isn't the answer you want to hear, but just doing hard things will make you a more motivated person over time. Now, you don't have to go outside and David Goggins an ultra marathon. It's better to treat this like going to the gym. You aren't going to walk into a gym and bench 405 your first day. The same way you aren't going to go from scrolling for eight hours straight to studying for eight hours straight. No matter how convincing the 3 a.m. motivation is, you need to start with something light. 
clean your room. Read for 10 minutes. Then try studying for 20 minutes and take a break. Optimizing dopamine takes time and is kind of a lifelong pursuit, but with effort, I believe you can do it. Anyway, today's therapy session is going to cost approximately one subscribe and I'll just flip the screen for you. It should ask you a question or two. And again, thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. Check them out with the link in description and get 20% off.